By definition, the loafer is an easy-going shoe that has the following characteristics. First of all, it has no laces, so it's just a slip-on shoe. Second, it always gives the ankle some room to breathe, therefore it's an ideal choice for the warm one. Third, the loafer's heel is pretty low and discreet. Finally, it has a decorative element, such as a tassel, a saddle or a horse bit. We'll cover the loafer subtypes in a minute. So please stay until the end to find some loafers combination for you. It is a common mistake to use the term moccasin and loafer interchangeably. Despite that the nomenclature may vary in places such as Europe, let's clear things up. Moccasins are usually made of a single piece of material and can be stitched with an apron. There are no hard soles, therefore there is no heel. They are much less refined, falling more into the realm of espadrilles, driving shoes, and mules. An Ivy League staple, there is some controversy about its origin. Some claim it's an all-American pedigree from G.H. Bass, a shoe company located in Maine in 1936. But others claim it was the French brand, J.M. Weston, founded in Limoges back in 1891. There is quite a debate here, so leave a comment down below with your thoughts about which is the actual penny loafer's origin, as well as any other useful information. Let's remember that the Ivy League students coined the term penny loafer. Some say it was because they could stack two pennies inside of the hole in the front side of the penny loafer. For others, keeping a penny in that very same hole was what we call a tool of luck. Yeah. The tassel loafer was first introduced by the Alden Shoe Company in the 1940s. This style was a more formal alternative to the penny loafer. As the name suggests, it features leather tassels on front of the shoe, mostly ornamental. Now for the horse bit loafer, this one was brought to us by none other than the House of Gucci back in the 1950s, introducing a black loafer with a golden brass strap across the front of the shoe. At the time, this shoe was reserved for only the most wealthiest individual. Therefore, holding true to the House of Gucci's nature and heritage, if you owned a pair of black Gucci loafers, you were someone. Although, I must add a small disclaimer. Black shoes are a sign of formality, at least according to the rules of classical menswear. Therefore, a black loafer, which is an intrinsically unformal shoe, is what you might call a sartorial oxymoron. Use this information as you will. Among the lesser known but just as important type of loafers, we have first the Belgian loafer, easily recognizable for its small and ornamental bow, as well as its online construction. A great indoor shoe, but a lousy outdoor one. Second, we have the butterfly loafers. The name comes to us from the symmetrical shape made from by the two overlapping pieces of leather that resemble butterfly wings. Very chic and very casual, even for loafer standards. Finally, we have the saddle loafer, also featuring a strip of leather that runs across the shoe, specifically the vamp and tongue. But instead of stopping at the moccasin-like apron, this saddle will continue down the loafer's waist and sole. Make sure to keep your shoe lingo up to date by checking out the Oxford and Derby video up here. Not to mention all their subtypes as well. Let us not forget that the loafer is an intrinsically informal shoe. Therefore, you won't see a penny loafer with a tuxedo. Now, remember when I said that penny loafers and the color black are the type of factorial oxymoron? but you will see black loafers. And because of the color black is an indicative of formality, let us establish the following peaking order, or pecking order, depending where you live. So, we have any type of loafer that's black, followed by the tassel loafer, followed by the horse bit loafer, followed by the penny loafer. As soon as one of these aforementioned loafers are black, the formality kicks up a notch. Let me know down in the comments which is your favorite type of loafer and why. I'm Mr. Panache, your guide in classical menswear and savoir faire. We'll be seeing each other on the next episode. See you soon.